Welcome to China Institute's Piece of Chi Pieces of China, an online series that tells the story of China one object at a time. I'm Dinda Elliott, and I am delighted to be joined today by our friend Zach Dykwald, author of Young China, How the Restless Generation Will Change Their Country and the World. Zach, who speaks perfect Mandarin, by the way, is probably the leading Western expert on youth culture in China. Today, Zach is gonna share with us a song that rocked China, and speaks volumes about what it feels like to be young and Chinese today. So Zach, so glad you could join us today. Thank you. Um, so these guys, who's, their band is Jiulian Zhenren, right? So they're called Real Guys from Jiulian. Um, tell us about the song. What's it called? You know, who sings it? And why did it become such a big deal? Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure, um, especially to share this band and this song. So if... 15 months ago, we were sitting down and having a talk about who are the big uh, sort of rock icons within China. No one would have heard uh, of Julian Zhenyuan. And um, that's part of like, their story. So uh, a year ago on Yue De the Sha Tian, in summer, and Gai Qi sort of reality. Wait a show. second, hold on a second. We're having some problem with the sound. Um, okay. So we were fine just now, but I just want to make sure everybody can hear stuff. So say that again and say that last sentence again, and um, we'll see how the sound goes. So last summer on yeah. Yue De the Sha Tian, um, the Bands of Summer, it was an Aichi reality show where they oh, more or less brought all of the A-listers, MB-listers, oh. NC-listers um, from China's rock and punk scene from like the last 30 years. Uh, there was one band that nobody knew. So we're talking like... F-listers at best. And that was these guys, the real guys from Julian. And they showed up with their grandmother's um, like fermented nuts that they ended up sharing around with all of the bands they had looked up to their entire lives. Uh, they hit the stage, this band that no one had ever heard of, and they dropped this song that I'm about to share, which uh, more or less translates to, don't bully young people for being broke. Uh, and the song just blew everybody's minds. <clears throat> so not just the people who were there, but the song floated all around the country and, and started this really grassroots movement around this band that no one had ever heard of. A tiny little prefecture city outside of, you're uh, in Guangdong. Um, the song, and we, we can share a little bit in a second, uh, what I like so much about it and what I thought would, it would be such a good fit for today is it's a real example of the direction that China is going uh, in terms of what a modern youth culture looks like. So obviously rock and roll, you know, isn't traditionally Chinese. It definitely came from the West. And is the story that they're telling. And you're seeing this a little bit in rap too. But what's so cool about this band is that the story that they're telling, the, the emotion they're transmitting, um, and then some of the musical characteristics that you're going to hear uh, are uniquely Chinese. It's an interesting blend of East and West. It's not pure Westernization. It's not pure Easternization. Uh, they've created something entirely new that resonated throughout the country. Let me jump in for a sec um, to ask you uh, a little bit about the lyrics, because the lyrics speak to a kind of an angst and an anger, right? So talk about the lyrics. What the is lyrics, the song it, about? It's a conversation. Uh, and so by the way, it's, it's written entirely in Hakka, uh, which is, which is um, a minority dialect in South China. Uh, and most people in the, the actual- I think the sound problem might be from the moving around. I'm not sure, but so, cause- it, Okay, but, yeah. less movement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the so lyrics the are about- song, yeah. The lyrics are about, uh, it's a conversation between a father and his son. And the son is saying, I can, I can leave this, our small village, I can leave the mountain and make it in the big city. And make it in the big city. Sorry, the sound again is, yeah, make it in the big city, um, yep. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, it's, it's okay. Make it in the big city. And, and the son is, um, and the dad is basically saying, you have no shot. So one of my favorite lyrics is the dad, you have four legs, you couldn't walk out of our small town. Um, and so Even it's if this, you have four legs, you couldn't walk out of the small town. Exactly. So it's this tension. It's this tension from this pressure to succeed, this pressure to get ahead, 
what has really been defining, you know, after years of interviews and uh, pretty much throughout all of China's provinces, this pressure that young people feel from their parents to advance, to succeed, to make something of themselves. This ban is basically how this fight that promotes young people really familiar about. Well, we gotta say that sentence again. Yeah. This, say that sentence again. Sure, this, this band and this yeah. song is really howling uh, a fight that for so many young people is familiar. It's personal, it's touching, and it's real, which is why it resonated with so many people. So let's listen to a tiny bit of it. I'll warn the audience, and I'm sorry about the sound problems just now. We were just on before, and it was perfect, so I don't know what's going on with Zoom. But, um, but we'll play a little, Zach is going to play a little bit of 10 seconds or so of the song, only a little bit, because... Um, the streaming is not great of music and videos is not great on Zoom, but you'll have get a little sense of what they at least look like and a little bit of what they sound like. And then uh, we will share with you, if you go in the chat room, we'll share with you the link. So please listen to the song because it is unbelievable. It's just an unbelievable song and performance. But go ahead, Zach, if you can share the screen. And All right, share we'll now. To it now. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it's coming up. All yep, right, there we go. I'm gonna play. Yep, perfect. So hang in for a second. The sound will come through in a minute or in a few seconds. We can't, I can't hear any of it. It's amazing. We couldn't hear very well, but you even just seeing it and hearing a little bit, you can see it's kind of extraordinary. And it does look like these two guys from a village, right? Yeah. Um, so what does this song say about how young Chinese see themselves these, day, these days? I mean, you know, it seems like um, years ago, people in China really wanted everything that was foreign, but that maybe is changing. What, what do you see? It's part of what I love about this song is that it's intentionally written in dialect. So not even Mandarin. Like it used to be that uh, for a lot of Western, for a lot of Chinese bands, for a lot of uh, be it like rock or rap or whatever, that foreign was better. So like if you take a t-shirt and you slap an English word on it, it's going to sell. If people are, are singing in English, then it, it, it adds something. What I love about this band and the way that it resonated is that it expresses a pride where they're from. So it, it's not pretending to be international, uh, while also using, of course, the medium that is so internationally recognized that they grew up sort of experiencing as kids. And so it's this great blend of hyper-local uh, and sort of showing that, that, that pride of, okay, this is where we're from and this is what we're about, while also absorbing a larger the language of music and rock. Um, Absorbing the, inter yeah, the international language of music and rock. Got it. Just saying it because the sound is not great. Go on. Yep. Thanks, Linda. And um, what, what's so cool about these guys, well, first, the, the song is also really good. Like, it'd be one thing if they were making something and it sounded cheesy and it wasn't good, but it's actually... Uh, incredible, yeah. Incredible. And there, there's a lot of, there's, there's traditional Chinese characteristics. There's, there's sort of classic rock, some punk elements. Um, but watching the interesting pivot, um, recognizing that, okay, you know, 15 years ago, China was still relatively poor and still relatively weak in the global conversation. These last five years, we've watched a, a real pivot of pride. And we like to talk about nationalism in the international media. That's how we sort of push it from the government. But for the, for the guy, the, Say that again, this is important. So we talk about nationalism in the West and then you were saying? So when we talk about nationalism, we often think of it as a government pushed propaganda effort. Uh, when we do that, we overlook the lived experience throughout the country uh, 
big the cities the lived small experience cities, of young people in the country yeah um who have watched their country move from uh being overlooked so much to being considered world power from being village. overlooked, say that again, from being overlooked, I'm so sorry. Over, it, overlooked by much of the world yep. to, um, to becoming and being considered a world power. Yep. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, and I was talking to some people in the music industry about this, we wouldn't be having a trade war. It would be a great power building So China, like a lot of young people are watching themselves on the world stage, standing toe to toe um, it's, it's elevated a lot of modern Chinese culture to say, you know, we don't need to be Western to be cool. We're going to create our own thing that's incorporating a lot of this global, uh, some of the global attitudes, things that we like, but also not overlooking the our incredible personal attributes. So there's much, much more confidence is really, I think what you're saying. Um, so I wanted to dig into the meaning of the song again, some more, um, you know, you talked about the pressures that young Chinese feel these days. So talk about what it's like to be a Chinese girl, you know, or young girl, young woman, mm -hmm. and what it's like to be a Chinese young man. I mean, obviously these are generalizations, but generalizations are sometimes very useful and helpful. Well, I often talk about sort of this young generation and how they're caught between two tectonic plates. On one hand, you have tradition is of, of what it's often always meant to be Chinese. Um, on the other hand, you have the pressures of modernity, modernization, getting ahead in what this talks about. And those tectonic plates are grinding against each other. One great example, and, and for men and women, they manifest in different ways. For women, we know about leftover women. That's a phenomenon we often talk about. The idea that after age 27, increasingly later, um, if you're not married, you're deemed socially inedible, the leftovers. Uh, so on one hand, you have this sort of confusion principle of forming a family. Say again, on one hand, you have this confusion. On one hand, you have this sort of confusion ish yeah. principle of forming a family, yeah. um, settling down, and defining a lot of your value based on that. On the other hand, you're telling young women that they need to get a great high school education, a great college education, often a professional degree afterwards, get a good job. But then when they turn six, they have year that they have in Europe. Say Otherwise that they're about. called when they turn twenty-six, what happens? After twenty-six they have when they turn twenty-six, they have one year to basically fall in love, get married, have kids. Uh, is calling them inedible. Obviously the two are incompatible. And it's this friction and this sort of renegotiation of how those tectonic plates fit together. Right. Uh, that we're seeing expressed in a lot of art. And, and music what about young men? So men, it's a similar source, this idea of family. Um, young men feel a tremendous pressure from their parents to find a spouse, settle down and have kids. Now today, in order to be seen as an eligible bachelor, you have to own property. And so I often joke that you can't know Say the joke again. Say the joke again. You can't know about China's real estate market unless you understand China's marriage market. Because young men feel incredibly pressured to buy property and most of them can't afford it. So they end up borrowing from their parents and grandparents. And so in parents and grandparents, they turn into what's called which means a parent eater, somebody who feeds off of the older generations in order to buy an apartment, be considered an eligible bachelor, find a wife, have kids, and then make their parents happy. So again, this friction between tradition and modernity and figuring out, watching this young generation right now, they're defining what it means to be Chinese in the modern world today. They're right. figuring out how these tectonic plates are gonna fit together. And this song is the perfect kind of manifestation of all those tensions. So last question, because we're running out of time, but um, tell us a little bit about what's happened to the band since. What are they doing now? So this band in their small little town, uh, the, the two main singers were a, um, one was the music teacher and the other was the art teacher. 
uh, the biggest stage they'd played on before getting on the band center uh, was the Village Annual Festival. That was Sorry, it. Sorry, again, it was the Village Annual Festival? The Village Annual Festival, that was it. And so they have been propelled to national stardom. Uh, they're touring, you know, obviously, with, when uh, songs are blowing up. They've been able to make a career out of this while also still being really embedded in their local communities. Uh, back to the end of the show, Say that again, they're embedded in their local communities, and then what were you saying? They're actually showing a bit of a philanthropic vein, which we're seeing increasingly. Uh, and that is they're contributing to the education of the school where they uh, where they came out from. So it's it's pretty cool. They're they're both national they're stars. Back as to the well village as, again, right? Exactly. So yeah. exactly. So they're they're national stars, but instead of just running after cash, which I mean, so much of China's last twenty or thirty years was about the race for money. Um, but now this young generation is sort of renegotiating what makes them happy and. What's so cool about them is they give these schools return, but they also want to give back to the community that fostered them. Got it. And they're they're living in the village. They're still living in the village for for most of the year when they're not touring. Wow. Well, thank you so much for that amazing kind of tour of the tour of the music scene and the young Chinese scene. It's um, it's all so complex, but we're very grateful for your insights. And I'm so sorry we have to stop now. Um, but we are definitely going to bring, try to bring Zach Dykewald back in longer form, hopefully in person next time. Uh, and I apologize so much for the sound issues. That's the, this, this is the, these are the times we live in these days. Um, I want to tell everyone you can catch all of the Pieces of China episodes on YouTube. And so please check them out. And I want to encourage you all to please, please become members of China Institute because with membership, you get great discounts, but really more importantly, you're supporting us and helping us bring brilliant speakers like Zach Dykewald to you in the, our broad array of programs. Um, please join us next week for top economist, Patrick Chovanek, who will talk about a 1911 Japanese railway bond that brought down the imperial system and what it says about China's continuing struggle with foreign influence. Zach, I want to thank you so much for helping us tell the story of China. Thanks thank so much for having me, Binda. It was great.